COVID-19, poor demand and several other factors caused a drop in the steel production worldwide the past few years. This included China which is not only the biggest steel producer but the one with a massive impact on the steel prices as well. While China's production fell for the second consecutive year, India was the only country on the list of large producers to increase steel production. In fact, the country's output recently reached 125.3 million tons up from 118.2 million tons in the previous year. Hi, my name is Monisha Chaudhary and in this video, we are going to talk about India's strategy to occupy the prominent position in world's steel market. India's growth is particularly significant, considering that many of the largest steel producing countries including China, Japan, the US and Russia experienced declines in production. In fact, Iran was the only other country among the top 10 nations to see rise in the steel output. The Indian Steel Association ISA, projects a 7.5% growth in the domestic steel demand for the fiscal year 2024. In fiscal year 2025, the ISA expects a further 6.3% increase to 136.97 million tons. This anticipated growth in demand is primarily attributed to the government's focus on infrastructure development and expansion of construction activities. So far in 2023, India seems to com be committed to the path of growth whereas China has allowed demand to drop. Amidst China's struggling construction sector and the looming possibility of recession in the US and Europe, there is no doubt that India is now a crucial factor in revitalizing global steel demand. The journey of India's steel industry is a story of hard work, commitment and innovation. In a major turnaround, India has transformed from a net importer to a net exporter in steel sector. But this position hasn't come that easy. The government has taken a slew of measures to help the industry grow over the years by leaps and bounds. Foremost among them is steel scrap recycling policy. The government has come up with this policy to promote scientific processing and recycling of the ferrous scrap. Six vehicle scrapping centers have been identified in different cities for the purpose and three more will begin their operations very soon. The end of life vehicles ELVs will be used as the raw material for the production of steel. The state governments as well as the private sector are being onboarded in this regard. Then comes national steel policy. The government came up with this policy in 2017 with a focus on developing a technologically advanced and globally competitive steel industry that promotes economic growth as well. Apart from setting a high target of achieving 300 million tons per annum of steel production by 2030, the policy also envisaged to enhance the operational capacity of crude steel production. The policy gives preference to domestically manufactured iron and steel products in government procurement which has so far resulted in import substitution to the tune of 34,800 crores approximately. Talking about the PLI scheme, the government also came up with a productivity linked incentive scheme which proved to be a quite successful one for domestic production of a specialty steel. So far, 57 memorandum of understandings involving around 27 companies have been signed under this scheme. This will attract a committed investment of around 30,000 crores with a downstream capacity addition of 24.7 million tons per annum and an employment generation of around 55,000. Similarly, Brand India labeling is an important exercise to differentiate Indian quality steel from others. The Union Ministry of Steel has undertaken the initiative of Make in India branding of steel produced in the country and major steel producers have already come together in this direction. 
The ministry has also onboarded itself on the PM Gati Shakti National Master Plan portal. It has identified around 22 critical infrastructure gaps and is pursuing it with the uh, union ministries of road, transport, highways, railways, ports, shipping and waterways. In order to promote decarbonization in the steel sector, the steel ministry has already constituted 13 task forces for identifying the action points for each aspect of green steel production and is in continuous talks with the stakeholders from the steel industry. Other ministries, departments such as environment, forest, climate change, railways, power etc. has also come in support of this motive. Down the line, the future of India's steel industry and its overall status in the world market is all glory and no gloom. That's all for this video. See you again in the next video with some similar current affairs. Till then, goodbye and take care.